The Asylum for Wayward and Victorian Girls by Emily Orton Awareness is the enemy of sanity, for once you hear the screaming, it never stops. Perfume was first created to mask the stench of foul and offensive odors. Spices and bold flavorings were created to mask the taste of putrid and rotting meat. What then was music created for? Was it to drown out the voices of others, or the voices within ourselves? I think I know. I remember when I was still a child, how I was plagued by voices in my head. The voices frightened me, bringing me to tears nearly every night, until adolescence and, as such, I was always dehydrated. I lived each day, dreading the night to come, when my lips would be seized by a heavy paralysis, the voices growing louder and louder and louder, until I couldn't hear you if you were shouting in my ear. Oddly enough, no one believed these voices of mine to be real enough to warrant looking into. And so I had no choice but to find some way to overcome this nightly terror on my own. After the first few years, the voices began to manifest even during the day. I remember standing in the doorway to my bedroom one afternoon and beginning to cry. I must have made a noise of some sort because my grandmother, who was in the kitchen at the other end of our long hallway, this was the only time I ever saw her, asked me if I was all right. Having already learned to hide my feelings, if only to preserve my six-year-old dignity, I called back to my grandmother in my calmest voice, telling her that I was fine and that I had only bitten my lip. Naturally, she believed me. As long as I live, I will never forget the night when I lay in my bed and screaming for help, sobbing and covering my ears, having failed to produce any result. I tried the only thing left. I played music in my head. I played the most beautiful piece of my age-old mind could comprehend. Bachel Bell's canon, indeed, of course. To most people, this work has become as trite and empty as the bride wearing white having been played at weddings at nauseam. But to me, it was the sound of heaven, all planets aligned. All spheres throughout the entire universe moving together in perfect accord. And even though anything so utterly perfect always made me cry, it didn't matter. Canon in D was the sound of making sense, and it may have saved my life. In the battle between musical order and terrifying chaos, musical order won out every time. Each night this war was waged, and while the voices didn't stop coming to me, I had my secret weapon, and I applied it swiftly, letting the glorious, endless repetition of canon in D unfold like a blanket that covered the voices and smothered them into silence. The battlefield of my sleep was thus occupied until I first began to bleed, and, by then, the voices were the least of my problems. Of the few friends I have ever divulged this story to, most have suggested that my voices may have been angry spirits hunting me, or remnants of a past life, and that their eventual disappearance meant that they had moved on and were at last at peace. The myriad shrinks that I have emptied my pocketbook to ask have had no answer for me at all. But I will always believe that the voices flattened my mind in terrified anticipation of what was to come.